everyone. I'm Dr. Dimple Kaur. It's just taking me time to set up the screen. And today I'm going to talk about uh, applying the ancient wisdom in newer setting. And my research has been on Natya therapy. So uh, the title of uh, my paper today is Using Body Movements to Come Out of Depression. Uh, from, for me, I have been working with uh, performing arts of, from India for last 25 years and um, also doing psychotherapy trainings and been with education industry for over 25 years again. So parallelly, when I was uh, doing this work as well as study, what was coming again and again a dominant theme was that more and more emphasis when dealing with depression and various other psychological issues, the whole impact was on routine, physical exercise, and thinking positive. But when we were talking about these three things, one thing was missing was how do we integrate all these elements into the therapeutic setting? So here, when I'm going to begin my discourse on my research with Natya Shastra, which is a 5,000 year old book, and my uh, in applying it on patients uh, suffering with depression, I want to talk about the old spiritual scientists, which used to be working thousands of years ago on how people think and how they can actually maximize their potential. So uh, this particular uh, uh, author of the book, Natya Shastra Bharat Muni, as he's popularly known, but having lost most of the literature around his findings, uh, the effort was to find, revive it. And my research was in evolving it to a point wherein the human observatory lab that used to exist at that time and all the movements and their psychological impact that he had codified. I wanted to bring it out and apply it on people and then see what kind of neurological patterns or neuro patterns, behavioral differences I could see in that. <clears throat> now, what is actually Natya therapy? Uh, uh, coming from the tradition of uh, performing arts, Natya would be considered as arts. Coming from the acad academic background of doctorate in psychology, it would be considered as science. But when I was uh, kind of learning it, I felt there is actually no difference between arts and science. Both are very experiential and both are very creative and both actually deal with what happens within the mind of a person. And uh, I would like to draw the attention upon what therap as therapists we believe that mental and emotional problems are often held in the body. And therefore we have, a, we come across people suffering from diabetes or chronic pains and various other uh, illnesses which, uh, which arise due to mental issues like what we call as psychosomatic problems or any chronic diseases that you can name. This is this my experience of working parallelly with movement and psycho psychology. I was seeing a dramatic impact, a dramatic improvement in people who were experiencing the process. And when the, when, the, when the movements and the process of movement was applied, there was an overall transformation of personality that was happening from, from being very shy to becoming a speaker, from being very quiet to be open to learning. So there was a whole transformation of not only physical appearance, but of thought, sharing, emotions, and behavior was observed. I would like to uh, derive on all the other uh, 
fellow doctors who have shared that depression, and especially uh, Dr. Sadik, when he said the underlying issue was neglect, trauma, and abuse. And what happens with neglect, trauma, and abuse, and all these areas, depression, and the other key area that was very prominently affected was self-image, body image, self-esteem. That led to low confidence, zero leadership skills, a lot of fears and anxieties, and of course, body tension and chronic pain. So uh, these were the issues that I was observing what happened when a person faced trauma, what happened when person is feeling depressed. We all are understanding that when there is depression, the biggest feeling is hopelessness and also inability to perceive that there can be any help or anybody can pull you out of that situation, which we call as a dark, deep pit. So what is it that will bring out a person from that deep, dark pit? And First and the foremost, what was coming to my mind was also a very low self-image, which was either a byproduct of depression or a parallel product, parallel a theme running with depression. <clears throat> so uh, as an uh, experiment, I, I was administrating this test across uh, three cities. I conducted this research. Uh, and this was an open group. Uh, in the open group, I uh, gave self-image uh, test and depression test, Beck's inventory. So the, I'm going to share the results of the test. So pre-intervention, the average result was 13. And they were the, with the age group between 20 to 50. And most of the time they were coming to the workshop with a sense of uh, inability to cope up with the current situations they were in. And post intervention, the results dropped to 7.2 on an average. And most of the people actually said that it was, uh, now I'm not depressed, but I need to learn how to cope with what I'm dealing with. So uh, it was a beautiful amalgamation of talk therapy plus the embodied experience which was given to them through the, the process derived out of the process of Natya. This is again a scale which I was wanting to present wherein there was a significant drop in their understanding of depression. And those also lying on the mild and moderate side of depression could actually benefit from the therapy. So now I would like to uh, share with you very briefly what exactly was this book. Uh, Natya Shastra, Shastra in Sanskrit language means scientific manual. So because the language was not very wide, widely known and also lost uh, for, for many years to, to, the, to India, Shastra and the readings and the study which was done many, many uh, years ago was not coming completely to light. And the only way it was surviving was through oral tradition. In oral tradition also, we lost all the experts given the socio-political changes we went through. So what Natya Shastra was actually a scientific manual on the study of dramaturgy or histrionics. Now, when we talk dramaturgy, in the olden times, in the Vedic times, or in thousand year old. I don't want to label it, I just want to give it a timeline. In those times, the idea of arts and science was not outside the realm of everyday life. It was not only entertainment, but it was actually a very 
deep, uh, deep dive into how we can derive the maximum potential of mind and brain. The spirituality involved in it, the movement involved in it, and all the all kind of expressive arts integrated together to bring out a beautiful process of creating a pattern of self-exploration as well as self-activation, actualization. So this book has all so almost uh, more than 200, more than, I mean, hundreds of different codified hand gestures and other uh, body movement parts, which when combined give a very uh, interesting and dramatic results in human behavior. Why I chose this book was, as I have been sharing with you, that when I was looking at the gestures, the movements, the codi the codified uh, movements and their combinations, they were opening up a kind of uh, thought process, a kind of pattern in thinking, which was self explore all about self-exploration and also leading up to finding the true potential of a person. So be it values, be it uh, exemplary uh, way of living, all that could be taught through Natya Shastra. This, this particular therapy is based on the four rules taken from this book, which talks about four pillars, which are Angika, Vachika, Ahara, and Sattvika. I'll decode this. Angika is the body, actually. The whole, the whole system of body movements, the whole way our body is designed with joints and movement-based body that we are given, how it can be combined to make a meaningful representation. Only movement alone can also be a meaningful communication. Add to it the words vachika, which means the sound. Uh, it can be in form of poetry. It can be just talking, talk therapy. It can be any form of, or even sounds, just simple sounds. And the third element is the presentation, the ahara. Uh, when we talk about ahara, it's actually how we, when we teach behavior, when we start telling them be, uh, uh, rehabilitation, we talk about how important it is to take care of self, the body, the presentation. And even not only during depression, but also if we are talking about self-enhancement, we have to talk about presentation. The fourth pillar is sattvika, which is your inner true experience, which means those feelings, like if you are afraid, you, you will get palpitation. You cannot stop it. There is, you cannot control it. Uh, involuntary ways the body expresses the feelings, perspiration, palpitation, skin going pale. So all these are the inner true experiences which we feel, which we might have felt when we encountered trauma, which actually get, again, uh, uh, quoting, uh, uh, body keeps the score that all these traumas, impacts, emotions, neglect, abuse, get stored somewhere in the body as well. So all these inner experiences get stored somewhere in the soma as well. These four pillars, I combine in, in a way <clears throat> that they lead to a kind of a continuous pattern wherein the person who is experiencing it starts to see the newer configuration taking place within the body as well as mind. So and at physical level, of course, as science has uh, already 
spoken about exercise, the benefit of exercises, the good hormones, serotonin, all the dose uh, uh, hormones that are released to make person feel good. And along with that, the feeling of well-being, coordination and muscle tone improves with the given movements. At emotional level, the first thing that happens is these movements actually bring a strange kind of joy to the body and through the body to the mind. Because in my observation, the, there are certain exercises, when I, as soon as I start administering them, people start to smile with them. And with the smile, there is an automatic change within the feeling or the perception or uh, the present state changes. And when that state changes is when I can administrate, administer more of the therapeutic uh, element within it. And uh, another very important factor how this helps is that since there is a lot of expressive, expressiveness, expressive art elements hidden into it, uh, the person is able to express lots and lots of suppressed emotions. Once they are released is when I tell them that now we can explore newer pathway towards um, treating ourselves to towards happiness. Like I call it like moving from moving out of depression. Now this uh, at mental level, I am not able to present to you any uh, study, a study which will define in terms of uh, any kind of uh, machine oriented study, but empirical observation has, there has been a remarked improvement in motivation to get well. There is a remark increase in how do we get motivated towards getting better from hopelessness to some hope to get better and self uh, discovery starts to happen which actually leads to the treatment of depression. At least there is some hope for self which starts to trickle in. And then I am very much uh, in favor of adding spiritual aspect to it. Uh, when we say spiritual, I am not involving any faith or religious study. When I talk spiritual, my definition of spirituality stands, states that it is all about transcendence, uh, transcending from where we are to where we can be. And that is actually the, what I call as divine, going beyond our limits, going beyond our perceived uh, level of expertise or uh, breaking our limiting barrier, uh, limiting beliefs. So at all these levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual level, wherein we are able to get that energy to, ex, uh, to go beyond our limitations is how this therapy is designed to take the person who is experience, is take the person who is experiencing it. Uh, here I take, I will share an example that I take here that sometimes we talk as therapists, we talk about cleaning the closet of the mind. And we ask people to share whatever happened and how did it happen. And there is a lot in the closet. And during depression, people may or may not share. But what we sense is the smell that is, they all talk about it's bad, it's not nice, it's ugly, it's smelly, it's uh, heavy weight. And I termed it as dead rat. Let's find the dead rat. In which cupboard is it? So uh, when we are talking about, uh, people are talking about finding the dead rat. And sometimes they even figure out where it is. But how do they express what it is? That, bring, that brings us also to a point, what is the language of the mind? Many times 
in the my in my practice and most of you in your practice would have heard that i'm not able to express it i'm not able to tell you what i'm feeling i'm not able to how do i say it what do i say about it what shall i say and the main phrase is nothing i'm feeling nothing there is a numbness that comes so therefore my whole uh, research was on what is this language of mind which can we can capture on and when i correlate that language with the movement of the body sometimes we are we as therapists as psychologists as psychiatrists are taught to look at the patient look at the patient and you will read a lot and that was something to my mind a big 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 canvas to read but what if i start to teach them to talk to me in in that language as well and so this was my journey about creating that language and give that language and i believe probably this language clearly existed because the way it is codified in these four pillars and my practice started in teaching those gestures those that vocabulary that that uh, syntax through the body so that people can express more more and more to relieve them of their suppressed and repressed emotions and uh, to this to this end it was very vital that uh, we understand the satvika which was the true inner experience when i when i found when i started looking for the meaning of uh, satvika it the corresponding word was yatha swarup as it is which meant as it is as you experienced it or as you are feeling it something that originates in the mind as it is which was a very powerful word for me and my the book that i am bringing out is named after this satvika which means your true experience as it is and how do you explain or bring it out as i was mentioning paralysis perspiration horripilation change of voice trembling these are all involuntary actions but they tell us the impact of trauma or the abuse or the neglect that we have been feeling or experiencing from this uh, chapter 7 <coughs> of the same book the author stated that this is the way we can create the states of the mind and this particular line was very very uh, an eye opener to me very very important to me because when he said that we can create the states that is when i decided that wow how beautiful if something can create a negative state and there is a research there is a study which says we can create an alternate state as well from the body to the mind i decided to administer and look at the effects of that um, application to share with you the length and breadth of the language given in this uh, modality like there are 108 karanas which means combination of these movements permutation and combination mixed and matched to bring out very aesthetic as well as impactful movements and gestures 30 nritya hastas means the movement of hands charis means there are 32 different kind of movement of legs and feet 10 different arm movement nine different ways you actually stand and tell how uh you can depict what you want to tell about yourself and of course uh, 67 gestures of hand which are further divided into single hand or double hand gestures again and they have multiple layers of meanings attached to these gestures which with which which can support your thought process this is the most beautiful aspect of this particular book uh, this says that whatever is written in the book can be applied to any country any situation any time 
and depending upon what where, what and where you are that means the study was actually being done to be applied universally and not for any particular segment uh, this also uh, takes me to my journey when i went to greece there also i uh, went and saw a theater wherein the patient was brought for mental illness and then when they were released when they were going out they had to uh, see the theater or the play and during that time also it i mean it was very evident there that art and mental illness was together to treat patients so all these movements all these gestures were not designed for particular place but had a very universal application to it so when i spoke speak about the physical all these elements were talking about physical movements 108 karnas 32 charis 67 hand gestures then there are 36 glances eye movements major and minor limbs all these were further then correlated with psychological states and their complementary states when we talk about psychological states and very beautifully i was uh, listening to uh, dr uh, dr tatiana's uh, talk on gambling and gaming and the way they get immersed in that and the consequent negative impact which is which is coming on the brain as well as body the beauty of uh, this whole process was that this was a process wherein immersion was very important but the immersion included body and mind unlike today's gaming and gambling scenario body is totally static we have as if lost the whole language of the body the body movement we only talk from up till above our neck so uh, when <coughs> this aspect of immersion i found that when your body and mind integrate then the immersion and the flow that happens is very uplifting and transcending so therefore the process involved going deeper into the self and the process of ex uh, expressing the various arenas wherein this can be applied or has been applied is hypnotherapy neuro linguistic programming emdr just like i shared with you that 36 glances and emdr is also you know kind of using eye movement to desensitize the trauma and neurofeedback i would like to uh, say it in this these many words that it's like a new neural pathway it develops a new neural pathway which actually takes you to self actualization uh again recovery from trauma involves restoration of executive functioning and along with that we need to develop their light heartedness now how do we make them light hearted because there most of the time the imagery or the words they talk is i'm feeling heavy at heart i'm feeling very heavy the whole body stance is drooping and you know just static so how do we bring that out so this particular therapy i designed to first bring out the smiling aspect the light hearted it's not easy it's not in one go we go into this uh movement based it takes time but when with the preparation of mind we lead them into the activity the results are quite remarkable thank